Last time on Left Behind. But Yoda's time is short. I must get in touch with my friend Heim. No, this, this is totally inappropriate. I killed the man last night. You, you what? I have placed the call to Nikolai for his assistance in this. Uh, I wish you had done that. Rayford, I really need to talk to you. The security is tight at the wall. How will you get in without your rabbi friend? I don't know how. I just know I'm supposed to go there. You are one of them. I will kill you. <laughs> Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Kendale House Publishers proudly presents episode 30 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. For you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I really appreciate you seeing me, Rayford. What's wrong, Hattie? You look. Oh, good. oh, not here. Let's talk at dinner. Good evening. Welcome to the Global Bistro, mm. Miss Durham. Your usual table, ma'am. No, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, but we don't want to be hidden, either. I understand. Right this way. Oh, uh, Jeffrey, I doubt the potentate would appreciate these reports. Depressing patrons who want a little relaxation. I'm afraid it's on every station, ma'am. You can't find music? Something a little lighter? I'll check for you, ma'am, right away. Thank you. If Nikolai were here, that would have driven him crazy. <laughs> Jeffrey ought to thank you. I'd save his job. <laughs> well, Nikolai wanted the place to be an oasis. Somewhere you could go and get away. Oh, you were in on the planning? <laughs> I helped conceive it, from the menu hmm. to the atmosphere. Well, that's nice. Good job. Thank you. Hattie. Uh, uh, not yet, Rayford. Not yet. That's all you're going to say to me? He's in Galilee? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Galilee? Does it even exist anymore? I guess I could get a cab. But I have to have some destination. If I come back here later tonight, might I learn more? Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I don't understand. Please, can you tell me more? He who has ears... Look, look. I'll come back at midnight. I'm pleading for your help. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. <laughs> hmm. 
you believe it's been nearly two years since we flew together? <laughs> Rayford, this has been the most incredible two years of my life. <laughs> You've come a long way from senior flight attendant. Oh, <laughs> think about it. All I ever wanted to be was a flight attendant. And then you felt guilty when it lost its appeal. I loved the people, the travel. I had a huge crush on one of my pilots, but uh, that never worked out. <sighs> had to dredge that up, huh? Sorry, that's not what this is about. Good, because as you know, I'm happily married again. <laughs> I envy you. I thought you and Nikolai were getting married. So did I. Now I'm not so sure. Hmm. And I'm not sure I want to either. Oh. Well, if you want to talk about it. How is everything this evening? Oh, uh, fine, fine, Jeffrey, thank you. Uh, we're going to be here a while, so... Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll just apply this to your tab. If you need anything else, just call. Rayford, you probably don't know this, but uh, I actually had a thing for Buck Williams once. And? Well, to tell you the truth, when you dumped me. Uh, Hattie, I never dumped you. We were not an item. You gave me plenty of signals, Rayford. I admit that. Still, it's unfair to say I dumped you. I felt dumped, okay? Anyway, all of a sudden Buck Williams looked more attractive to me than ever. Um, forgive me, Hattie, but this is kind of old news. I know that. I know that. Just bear with me. As soon as I met Nikolai, I, I was stricken. When he showed interest. I thought it was just physical. And I'll admit, I would probably have slept with him in a minute and not regretted it. We got involved, and I fell in love. But as God is my witness... Oh, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't say that around you. Go ahead. I never expected him to be truly interested in me. I just wanted to enjoy it while it lasted. And now... Well, I knew the end had to come soon, and I really thought I was prepared for it. But then, he made me his personal assistant. It was just a way to keep me available to him after hours. Mm. And you went along with it? Of course. And my worst fears were realized. He's still charming and dynamic, and the most incredible person I have ever met. But Rayford... I mean nothing to him. I was allowed little playthings like helping develop this restaurant and greeting groups touring the new global community headquarters. But I'm just window dressing. I didn't get a ring until after I was pregnant, and he still hasn't asked me to marry him. Didn't you imply you'd marry? I mean, by accepting his ring? It wasn't nearly that romantic. He told me to close my eyes and hold out my hand. Then he put the ring on my finger, and that was it. You're saying you don't feel committed? I don't feel anything. Hmm. And all the trappings, the wealth, your own car and driver. I assume you have an expense account. Oh, I have all that. To tell you the truth, all that stuff's like flying. You get tired of the routine. I was impressed at first. It was fun, but... Rayford, it's not who I am. I don't know anybody here. People treat me with respect, like Jeffrey, but only because of who I live with. They don't really know him, either. And neither do I. And then, today, I asked him if I could go back to the States for a while to visit my family. Hattie, you are an adult. Make these decisions for yourself. I have more to do than worry about your little schedule. My little schedule? Right. You do not have to ask me. These are things you care for yourself. I thought you'd be interested that I was going to be away. I, I thought you might have an opinion. You do not need my permission. Oh, I can't believe this. Daddy. I would we... rather you be mad at me than ignore me. I am not ignoring you. Nikolai, we don't talk. We just coexist. No, no, check that. You live down the hall, and you come here in, in between meetings. Daddy, I have... I have not made my feelings clear. I want you here. I want you to bear my child. Why do I get the feeling but that I... I need to replace you as my personal assistant. 
What? Yes, I think the job has simply passed you by. <laughs> Nikolai, that job passed me by the day before I took it. I've never been cut out to be a secretary. Huh. I'm glad you see it for what it is. But where does that leave me? What's the future for us? Us. <laughs> yes, us! I'm wearing your ring and carrying your child. When are we going to make this permanent? This is no life for you. Oh, I'm just a piece of furniture to him, Rayford. Hmm. Um, I'm curious, Hattie. When you say you two don't talk, has he ever mentioned Chloe and Buck? <laughs> oh, you don't have to worry about that. Even with all those eyes he has out there, I don't think he has any idea of a connection between you and Buck. Mm. I never mentioned that Buck married your daughter, and I never would. Why? He doesn't need to know. You know, for some reason, Ray, he trusts you implicitly on some things, and not at all on others. <laughs> I've noticed. Really? Like what? Being left out of the plans for the Condor, for one. Oh, yeah. Just seemed bizarre to be his pilot and then be surprised by new equipment. <laughs> if you lived with him, it wouldn't surprise you. I've been out of the loop for months. So when you rushed up to him at the airstrip, Oh, you... I was testing him. I won't deny it. I wasn't as eager to see him as I let on, but I was giving him one more chance. <laughs> wasn't it obvious I spoiled his big appearance? That's the impression I had. <laughs> at least he called me his fiance. Oh, he said we were both overcome with grief. Rayford, there was no grief for him. He loves this stuff. Mm. He talks like a pacifist, but he hopes people will attack him so he can justify pouncing on them. In private, he's celebrating. He's rubbing his hands together, making plans, putting together his new team. You know, they're meeting right now. Who knows what they'll dream up? Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. What? Uh. Uh. Mm, what time is it? Mm. What was that about? God, was that just a dream or are you trying to tell me something? No news, sir. Tell them to tighten the borders around Israel. Do not let their rabbi escape. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, as I was saying, with these attacks, it is inevitable that the population level will decrease. As the population stabilizes, it will be important to ensure it does not explode again. Particularly, particularly in the underprivileged countries. Good. With proper legislation, we should be able to get a handle on the worldwide population control. What kind of legislation are we discussing here, potentate? Well, abortion, assisted suicide. Uh, and we must see a reduction in the astronomical expense of care for the defective, the handicapped. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something, Hattie. You need to know that Buck and Chloe and I all care very deeply about you. I know, but... I but... don't think you do know. We all wondered if this was the best thing for you. It did from the start. But I hardly heard from any of you. Well, we didn't feel we had a right to say anything. You're an adult. It's your life. I felt I'd pushed you away from PanCon. Buck feels guilty for having introduced you to Nikolai. Chloe often wonders if she couldn't have said or done something that might have changed her mind. But why? How did any of you know I wasn't happy here? We just sensed the odds were against you. You know, it may come as a shock to you to know that I never planned on becoming pregnant out of wedlock. Why should that surprise me? Oh, well, Rayford, I can't say my morals were exactly pristine... I'm just saying I wasn't raised that way, and I certainly would not have planned to have a baby without being married. And now? The same is true now. I'm not going to use this pregnancy to force Nikolai Carpathia to marry me. If I pushed him, he'd probably tell me to have an abortion. Um, you'd 
never consider that, would you? Rayford, I think about it every day. Uh, Hattie, do me a big favor, will you? <laughs> Maybe. Would you think about that very carefully before you take any action? Talk about it with your friends. I hardly have any friends. Hmm. Chloe and Buck and I still consider you our friend. And I believe Amanda could become a good friend if she got to know you. <laughs> I have a feeling the more Amanda got to know me, the less she'd like me. Well, just proves you don't know her. She's the type who doesn't even have to like you to love you. Hmm. Anyway, you said Nikolai didn't mind if you took a trip back to the States. Well, yeah, but that was before the war broke out. Several airports are still taking incoming flights. And as far as I know, no nuclear-equipped warheads landed on any major cities. You think you'd let me go back to the States, then? I wouldn't know, but I'm trying to get back there by Sunday to check on Amanda and to attend a memorial service. Oh, how are you getting there? Commercial. Personally, I think carting around even a dozen or fewer dignitaries is extravagant for the Condor. Anyway, the potent Oh, has... please, don't call him that. Oh, does it sound as ridiculous to you as it does to me? <laughs> it always has. <laughs> For such a brilliant, powerful man, that stupid title makes him sound like a buffoon. Uh, I don't really know him well enough to call him Nikolai. Well, don't most of you church types consider him the Antichrist? The, uh, the Antichrist? <laughs> I can read, Rayford. In fact, I like Buck's writing. <sighs> When he covers all the various theories and talks about what people think, it comes out that there's a big faction who believes Nikolai might be the Antichrist. I've heard that. So, you could call him A.C. for short. Uh, that's not funny. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I wouldn't know if a person was the Antichrist if he was staring me in the face. <clears throat> anyway, Hattie, I think you should ask... <laughs> For lack of a better title, Global Community Grand Potentate Nikolai Carpathia. <laughs> <laughs> if it's still all right to go home, I'm flying into Milwaukee Saturday. From what I understand, there's room in a rather large house of a woman from our church. You could stay with us. Oh, I couldn't do that, Rayford. My, my mother's in Denver. They haven't been hit yet, have they? <laughs> not as far as I know. You know, I'm not going to ask Nikolai. You don't want to go? Oh, I want to go. And I will go. I'm just going to leave word that I'm gone. Maybe I'll see you on the flight to Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, unless you hear otherwise, why don't you just assume that my driver will pick you up at 10.30 Saturday morning? Oh, do you think it would be all right with Amanda if we sat together? You speak English? Smart. Very smart. How far to Galilee? You go to Galilee? Whaling Wall in Jerusalem. No, 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 no. Keep going. I want the Whaling Wall now, Galilee later. How far? Galilee now, Lake Tiberius. About 120 kilometers. I think that's them right over there. Hey, you better watch yourself, bud. Those guys will fry you alive. Uh, thanks. I'll take my chances. I need clarification. Can I know about my friend's location? He who has ears to I hear, know that, but I... You would dare interrupt the servants of the Most High God? Forgive me. You must first communicate with the one who loves you. The one who loves me? Look, I, I don't mean to be... <sighs> this is Buck. Buck, it's Chloe. It's about midnight there, right? Right, Chloe, but right now Buck, are you I'm sleeping? In... No, I'm up and I'm... Buck, just tell me you're not at the King David right now. Well, I'm staying there, but, but Chloe... But you're not there I'm... right now, right? No, I'm Honey, not. I don't know how to tell you this, but I just have this feeling that you shouldn't be in that hotel tonight. In fact, I just have a premonition that... You shouldn't be in Jerusalem overnight. I don't know about tomorrow, and I don't know about premonitions and all that, but the feeling is so Chloe, strong. I Chloe, just had to call Chloe, Chloe, what? I'm going to need to call you back, okay? We're okay, but you can't take the time to talk Chloe, to me when I... Chloe, Chloe, I won't stay at the King David tonight, and I won't stay in Jerusalem overnight, okay? Okay, well, that makes me feel better, but I, I just don't want to talk to you. I'll call you back, hon, I promise. I'm, I'm ready now. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, 
that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. By Galilee, I can only assume you mean Lake Tiberius. Will I find my friend in Galilee, or on the Sea of Galilee, or where? He who has ears to hear, let, let him, him hear. hear. Yes, but how do I get there? It will go well with you if you return to the multitude. Return to the multitude? Uh, to them? Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. He who has ears to hear. He who has ears to hear. Let him hear. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can a fellow get a boat ride up the Jordan River into Lake Tiberias at this time of night? Uh, yes. Boat tour come in daytime. No, no, no. I need one tonight. Tonight? Uh, get in. I take you to river. It would be cheaper for you to wait until tomorrow. No, no, no. I can't wait. I have to go tonight. No, I can take you. Of course, the cost will be quite high. Yeah, well, I figured that. What did you say your name was? Michael. 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 Okay, fair enough. I, I want to go all the way up river to Lake Tiberius. From Jericho, that is nearly 100 kilometers against current. Yeah. Well, how long will it take? to the mouth of Lake Tiberius. Three hours, perhaps more. Fine. When would you like to leave? Right now. Hmm. In the daytime, I carry 20 tourists and four strong young men. Well, why so many? We pilot by arm power. You mean oars? Yes, just like in the Bible. But you've got motors. Why would you We do cover that? the outboards with wood and burlap, and no one is the wiser. It makes for a long day, but the tourists are happy. Didn't know it'd be this cold. So, you are American. Right. And you don't know who you're looking for? Or exactly where they'll be? Sorry. I'm just counting on figuring it out when I get there. <laughs> Lake Tiberius is no pond. Your friend or friends could be on either shore. Or at either end. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You've never spoken to me audibly, and I don't expect you to start now, but I could sure use more direction. I don't know if the dream is from you, and I'm supposed to go through Egypt on the way back, or what. I, I don't know if I'm going to find Ben Judah with some fishermen, or whether I'm even on the right track by heading to the old Sea of Galilee. I've always enjoyed being resourceful, but I confess, I am at the end of my rope here. Please help me. So much for the answer to prayer. Why did we stop? Is there a problem? Michael? There is no problem, Mr. Katz. Until your eyes grow accustomed to the darkness, you will not be able to see the high-powered weapon pointed at your head. Please, remain seated. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. 
Thank you for listening.